Acciones y no salidos, macarizin setin feotopon, tinai macariston que panamomiton, que mi terra ufeuimon. In the mother of the Cherubim, the mother of the Cherubim, the mother of the Cherubim, the mother the sacrament of holy matrimony, like all sacraments in the Orthodox Church, was instituted by Jesus Christ. When he started his public ministry with a miracle at the wedding in Cana, Christ signified the sanctity of marital union. Through his teachings, St. Paul gave marriage a very specific meaning and significance. The union of man and woman reflects the union of Christ with his church. Ευλογητός ο Θεός ημών πάντοτε νυν και αγί και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Αμήν. Εν ειρήνη του Κυρίου δα ηθόμεν. Since early Christianity, every Orthodox marriage is sacramentally blessed only by episcopal permission. During the sacrament, a priest petitions on behalf of the couple, but only as an extension of a bishop who represents Christ. To this day then, in an Orthodox marriage, as in all sacraments, Christ himself is really the celebrant. This is clearly demonstrated when the priest proclaims the betrothal and the crowning of the couple in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That the Lord our God will grace their marriage with honor and their union with purity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, deliver us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God. For centuries, the Church did not know a rite of marriage separated from the Eucharistic liturgy. The blessing was received and a marital union was sealed during the liturgy in joint communion of the couple with the gifts of the Holy Eucharist. A specific marriage rite appeared in the liturgy as early as the 4th century. A more elaborate marriage rite began to appear as early as the 14th century when it was decreed that a marriage not blessed by the Church will not be considered a marriage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Eternal God, who has brought unto unity those who were separated and has ordained for them an indissolvable bond of love. Who bless the present-day ceremony developed gradually over the course of several centuries. The marriage ceremony is divided into two parts, originally held separately, but now celebrated in immediate succession. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The first is the order of betrothal. The focal point of this brief service is the blessing and exchange of rings. Since antiquity, rings have been regarded as seals of a pledge, a promise given. In anticipation of marriage, they symbolize a vow to proceed with a commitment to marry. The rings, 
taking on their age-old meaning, embody the authority that the couple will share with each other, as well as the pledge they make to each other, and by so doing, the pledge they make to Christ. Virgin from among the Gentiles, bless this betrothal and unite and preserve these your servants in peace and harmony. For to you are due all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. The servant of God, Demetrius, is betrothed to the servant of God, Eleni, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Arbonis et theo doulos to theo Demetrius tin doulin to theo Eleni stonuma to patros ke tu iu ke tu aiu pnemato. The back and forth movement from groom to bride, from bride to groom and back again, visually and dramatically, represents the interweaving of one life with the other. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The servant of God, Eleni, is betrothed to the servant of God, Demetrius, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Arabonisa thei duli tu theu Eleni, ton dulon tu theu Demetrion, stonuma tu patros ke tu iu ke tu aiu pnevmatos. Amen. The servant of God, Eleni, is betrothed to the servant of God, Demetrius, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The manifest and symbolic mutual commitments of bride and groom are expressed as their sponsor exchanges their rings to cement the bond created by their decisions. Now, blessed before God. Lord, have mercy. The exchange of rings, by biblical evidence to be worn on the right hand of a married couple, is only one function performed by a sponsor. to him to arrange by the drawing of the water the betrothal of Rebecca. Bless also now the betrothals of these your servants, Demetrius and Eleni, and confirm the word which they have given. Strengthen them in the sacred union which is from you, for you have created from the beginning male and female, and by you is the woman joined to man as a helpmate for the propagation of the race of men. You have sent, O Lord our God, the truth of your people and your promise to your servants, our fathers, your elect from generation to generation. Look now upon your servants, Demetrius and Eleni, and confirm their pledge in faith and concord and truth and love. Sponsors, who can you, be Lord, either men or women, are not unlike the godparents at an Orthodox baptism. They become an integral part in the life of a married couple to share in their joys as well as their sorrows. Sponsors serve in the role of good friend and counselor. With the ring, our Heavenly Father was merciful to the prodigal son, for he said, Put a ring on his right hand and bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and make merry. Your right hand, O Lord, helped Moses to cross the Red Sea, and by your unfailing command the heavens were made firm and the earth was established. Now the right hands of your servant shall be blessed by your mighty word and your powerful arm. Bless also, O Lord, this placement of rings with a heavenly blessing, and may an angel of the Lord go before them all the days of their life. For you bless and sanctify With the all conclusion things, of the betrothal, glory, the service the now moves to the sacrament of marriage spirit, proper, known as the service of the, the crowning. Of Amen. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, those who follow in his way. Oh, 
Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like young olive trees around your table. Ebloimeni vasilia tu patros ke tu iu ke tu iu pnebmatos ninke ai ke istu seonas to neono. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the servants of God, Demetrius and Eleni, who are now united in the fellowship of marriage, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That this marriage may be blessed as the marriage at Canaan and Galilee, let us pray. Orthodoxy to the recognizes Lord. that man and woman do not lose their individuality nor do they cease to function as unique persons in their marriage. Who they are, where they come from, their likes and dislikes, their skills and talents are merged into what begins as a process leading to a gloriously harmonized unit. <laughs> Christian marriage, enriched by divine grace, affords a husband and wife an opportunity to completion and perfection of their union and love. The constant refrain of the prayers of the sacrament speaks of marriage as a lifelong commitment of husband and wife to seek together holiness and to create an honorable union based on mutual respect, fidelity, tenderness understanding and love. The priest then calls on God to unite the bride and groom as husband and wife. O holy God who formed man from the dust and fashioned woman and joined her to him as a helpmate, for so it pleased your majesty that man should not be alone on the earth. Extend now, O Lord, your hand from heaven and join this your servant Demetrius and this your handmaiden Eleni. For by you the husband is united to the wife. Unite them in one mind, crown them in one marriage, Bless their union with the enjoyment of good children. For yours is the dominion, and yours is the kingdom, and the power and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and Just as the betrothal the reached its pinnacle in the exchange of rings, so now the marriage rite reaches a focal point, the crowning, where their union is expressed the the Father, and manifested. The servant of God, Demetrius, is crowned in marriage to the servant of God, Eleni, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Crowns Spirit. have symbolically represented through the ages the authority vested in monarchs to rule and protect the welfare of their realm. Also crowns are the sign of victory and martyrdom. Crowns in the sacrament of marriage 
orange or lemon blossoms in the Greek tradition, gold or silver in the Slavonic, are the outward visible sign signifying similar but divine authority. The special grace which man and woman receive from the Holy Spirit to rule over their new home and family, a small church, the miniature kingdom of heaven, and to witness as well to the power of their faith and their commitment to the values of the gospel. Bride and groom have given themselves to each other out of mutual respect and love. As equal partners, they complement and fulfill each other in holy union. The servant of God, Eleni, is crowned in marriage to the servant of God, Demetrius, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord our God, crown them with glory and with honor. The crowns are visible signs of the joy and triumph and the oneness of the couple. They are crowns of martyrdom, since every true marriage demands enormous self-giving and self-sacrifice. The reading from St. Paul's Epistle to the Ephesians confirms that mystical aspect of the sacrament. Αδελφοί, ευχαριστείτε πάντοτε υπερ πάντων εν ονόματι του Κυρίου ημών Ιησού Χριστού το Θεό και Πατρί, υποτασσόμενοι αλλήλεις εν φόβο Χριστού. Εγυναίκες της ειδής ανδράσιν υποτάσσεις... Brethren, always and for everything, give thanks in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God the Father. Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, be subject to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself her savior. As the church is subject to Christ, so let wives also be subject in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that the church might be presented before him in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Even so, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no man ever hates his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. This is a great mystery and I take it to mean Christ and the Church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Ουτός αγαπάτο ως εαυτόν, η δέγινη η να φοβητέ τον άνδρα.
Ειρήνηση των γυνόσχων τη. Αλληλούια, αλληλούια. At the end of the epistle reading, the priest calls the people to rise and listen to the Holy Gospel. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Let us be The Gospel passage read during the sacrament of holy matrimony recalls the day when Jesus started his public ministry at the wedding in Cana. At that time there was a marriage at Cana in Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the marriage with his disciples. When the wine failed, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, O woman, what have you to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now six stone jars were standing there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the steward of the feast. So they took it. When the steward of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who drew the water... The fact that Christ began his public ministry in the wedding at Cana in an environment of joy and happiness stands as a reaffirmation that Christianity is a celebration of life. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Glory be to you, O Lord. Glory be to you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord our God, who in your saving wisdom deemed it right to show by your presence at Cain of Galilee that marriage is honorable, do now also protect your servants, Demetrius and Eleni, whom you have favored to be joined in marriage, in peace and concord. During the sacrament, the priest invokes the grace of God on the couple. Because in an Orthodox marriage, as in all sacraments, Christ himself is really the celebrant. It is he who sanctifies their union. For you are God, the God of mercy and salvation, and to you we offer glory. With your Father who is from everlasting, and with your all-holy good and life-giving Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. And ye must worthy, O Lord, to be bold and without reproach, dare call you our heavenly God as Father, and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Irini let us bow our heads to the Lord. To you, Lord. O God, who in your power created all things and established the world and made perfect everything you created, Bless now with the spiritual blessing this common cup to be offered to those united in the fellowship of marriage, 
The common cup of wine is not Holy Communion. Drinking from it serves as a reminder of their Holy Union. Now and forever and to the ages of ages. It represents in a way their cup of life, that as husband and wife they will drink together. Sweetness and bitterness, dreams and aspirations, happiness as well as sadness, triumph along with tribulation. The final major ritual of the service, a walk around the auxiliary table, is an abbreviated form of a procession in older times, by which the bride and groom were led to their home, there to be installed as leaders of their new house church. As such, the procession is an exuberant expression of joy and a sign of the couple's covenant relationship to love and cherish one another in God. Three consecutive circles with no beginning and no end, the procession, led by the priest, also symbolizes the unending journey husband and wife entering into the eternal kingdom of God together. May you be honored, O bridegroom, like Abraham, and be blessed like Isaac, and multiply like Jacob, walking in peace and doing in righteousness the commandments of God. And you, O bride, be honored like Sarah, and rejoice like Rebekah, and be fruitful like Rachel, rejoicing in your own husband and fulfilling the conditions of the law, for this is what has pleased God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. The Orthodox Rite does not contain legal language, vows or oaths. Husband and wife, commanded by God to love, cherish, honor and respect each other, pledge themselves to each other through visible signs, like prayers, rings, candles, crowns, and the common cup. Amen. The couple is granted by the Holy Spirit the grace and power to learn love, patience, and forgiveness. To be kind, understanding, trusting, and loyal to each other. To honor, respect, and enjoy their human sexuality. And in due time also to become loving and caring parents. Good children, progress in life and in faith. In short, they are endowed with the spiritual strength to fulfill the purposes of their marriage and enjoy all the benefits of the union into which they have pledged themselves and which Christ has brought them. May Christ, our true God, who by his presence at Cana indicated marriage to be honorable, through the prayers of his most holy mother, of the glorious and renowned apostles, of the God crowned and equal to the apostles, Saints Constantine and Helen, 
of the great martyr Procopius and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us as a good and merciful God. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, be merciful and save us. Amen. O te tom vitone pesepse navrokos Israel, nin de tom Christone genisen asporos hi parthenos. I falasta meta tim parodon tu Israel eminen avos. You may kiss your bride. I ambem tos meta tim kisin tu Emmanuel eminen avtoros. On ke pron ke fanis os anthropos teos. Every time we witness a marriage like the one we saw today, we cannot help but wonder if the couple getting married has a true concept of the Christian nature of the sacrament. The ceremony in the Orthodox Church is indeed a beautiful and inspiring one, full of significant symbolism. There is, however, more to matrimony than just ceremony. Troubles and difficulties come in every life. But these obstacles are, in a way, opportunities to prove the love and the faith and the fidelity which we profess so eloquently in this service. It is strange that even after these declarations, a man or a woman will not give up pride or anger or some other vice to save a marriage. Happiness and meaning in life has to be earned by unselfishness, by honest work and honest love. An issue of great importance to orthodoxy in the Western world is the frequent occurrence of interfaith marriages. These marriages have become an inevitable reality, and the Church has responded with understanding and compassion. The Church will permit an interfaith couple the benefit of a sacramental marriage within the church. The non-Orthodox spouse is not required to embrace the faith, but must consent to allow the Orthodox spouse to continue in the faith. On the other hand, the church will not perform a marriage when one of the spouses is not a baptized Christian, unless that spouse freely agrees to be baptized in the church. A marriage outside the church is not considered a marriage by the Orthodox Church. By marrying outside the church, whether under the auspices of a different Christian confession or by civil authority alone, Orthodox Christians technically forfeit their good standing in the church. They can no longer participate in any of the holy sacraments, including the act of sponsoring an Orthodox baptism or wedding. The faithful, however, can restore themselves to good standing and full participation in sacramental life simply by having their marriage blessed in the Orthodox Church. Let us also remember that marriage can go beyond the fulfillment of two people in love. Marriage can make life. That is why it is so important to the world and in the lives of every couple. God has called these people to be his partners in the creation of life. He has called them to pass on to others that spark of life called humanity. Yes, there are rings and crowns, hymns and flowers, prayers and candles. But when all this is done, the couple must go forward and live their sacramental union. But they go united in God, and this makes a difference. The Lord is a partner in the marriage. He has an interest in the union. This interest is evident in the prayers of the ritual. Do thou, O Lord, maintain in peace and concord these thy servants, whom it has pleased thee to join together. Cause their marriage to be honorable, 
preserve their union blameless, mercifully grant that they may live together in purity and enable them to attain a ripe old age, walking in thy commandments with pure heart. Thank you. 